yes, I think the market should not be solely focused on the uh, rate cuts. You have to look at it a little bit longer and figure out over your investment horizon, are you going to get the rate cuts you are anticipating rather than waiting for specific policy dates. What I mean by this is, as most of us investors in debt markets, we invest for the next three years, maybe two years or longer even. Uh, so the question we should be asking ourselves is, are, are those rate cuts going to come in your time horizon? That may be one year, two years, three years. It's not relevant to us whether that rate cut happens in the next month's policy or the policy after that. Uh, from Dr. Rajan's point of view, the RBI needs to look a little bit medium term in setting its policy goals in terms of expected inflation over the next one to two years. Currently, clearly, inflation is well below the RBI trajectory. Uh, and that's why the doc, uh, that Dr. Rajan has mentioned repeatedly that they are just waiting to uh, waiting for the right opportunity to cut rates. If you look at the GDP deflator, deflator and it clearly indicates that inflation is close to zero. If you look at WPI, it's a negative territory. So there is a point of view that inflation is too low in India. But as the RBI has pointed out and Dr. Rajan has pointed out, what is relevant for a borrower? I mean, the question is always, is the borrower paying too high a level of interest for his inflation? Today you are looking at a saver's point of view, CPI inflation and therefore the saver should be compensated for inflation. Should the borrower, shouldn't we also look at the borrower's point of view? And what Dr. Rajan has said and the RBI has said is what is relevant for the borrower is not so much the WPI inflation but the margins. Now thanks to the fall in WPI inflation, thanks to the fall in commodity prices, what you have seen is a significant expansion in corporate profitability. By, by that I mean the margin expansion that you have seen in companies. Therefore, even at the current level of interest, Debt servicing has actually become easier. So I think uh, uh, RBI is quite right in looking past this disinflation that you have seen in WPI which is very very commodity driven and being much more focused on the investor or the saver to give him or her a positive real rate. I think that's the way we need to look at it as investors. So uh, the government is uh, putting forward a case for rate cuts which is always going to be the case. The, the, the the people in the finance ministry or in government will be looking for lower rates to stimulate growth. From the Reserve Bank's point of view, low inflation itself is a big stimulus for growth. Therefore, from an RBI standpoint, keeping inflation low and stable is, should be the first objective of monetary policy. When you go back in time in the last rate, rate hike cycle by the Fed in 2004 to 2006, something very interesting happens. The rupee was strong during that entire period. In fact, by 2007, the rupee was 38 to the dollar compared to about 50 to the dollar at the start of that decade. We were running current account surpluses. Money was coming into India despite the lower interest rate differentials. Why did this happen? The U.S. Federal Reserve is going to increase rates in the U.S. because the U.S. economy can take it. By that I mean that U.S. growth and inflation is on the upside. And that is not bad news for the global economy. So from an economy standpoint, rising U.S. rates which are driven by strong U.S. fundamentals is good news as far as the macro economy is concerned. Yes, what we need to look at is when the Fed makes the first move, there may be some volatility in the market. Remember what happened two years ago when the Fed started talking about tapering and there was a lot of currency volatility and bond market volatility around the world. The RBI needs to look at the currency and market volatility to see if there is any volatility in the markets as a result of the Fed move. And that's perhaps the reason why the RBI will wait for the Fed to show its hands before cutting rates. At Access Management, we have been very, very conservative on credit exposures. And especially in the last few years, there has been very little reward for going into higher uh, 
uh, yield or lower rated instruments. What do I mean by this? The credit environment has deteriorated quite markedly thanks to the slowdown in the macroeconomy and the commodity cycle. Bank NPAs, for example, are at a 10 year high, indicating that stress is in the there is a lot of stress in the borrowing or the corporate sector. In that context, what you actually observe is that the spread of lower rated companies, the double A's and A rated paper, have actually compressed. So compared to a three year ago level where double A spreads used to be 200 basis points, now they are at about 100 basis points. So your spreads or the compensation for credit risk has decreased at a time that the credit risk itself has increased. Therefore, we have been very cautious in our stance. A couple of other key points that you also need to look at when you are investing in credit. First, have an adequate diversification strategy. At Access Mutual Fund, when we look at instruments which are rated AA minus or below, we place a limit uh, of 2% per issuer. Uh, this compares to the SEBI regulatory limit of 15% per issuer. Why do we do a limit of 2% per issuer? This is applicable to most of our funds. Is that in case of a downgrade, the impact is only on a much smaller part of the portfolio. And that is, I think, the right way to look at portfolio diversification. Similarly, investors who have invested in equity funds realize that high risk sector funds or small caps and mid caps should only form a small part of your allocation. Similarly, in debt funds also, you need to have an allocation policy looking at higher risk sectors such as lower rated corporate bonds and high quality sectors such as AAAs and GSEX and have a good mix and probably bias your portfolio towards higher quality rather than lower quality. At Access Mutual Fund we offer a range of products depending on the risk profile of the investors. Investors who are looking for shorter horizons by which I mean perhaps one to three years and have very limited ability to take volatility should consider funds such as access short term fund or access fixed income opportunities funds which are typically in the range of about one to two or three years of duration which limits the volatility risk in these funds. Investors who can take a little bit of higher risk in the short term and therefore have a slightly longer holding period three years and above should consider funds such as access dynamic bond fund or access income fund which have a longer duration. Uh, in these two funds cases somewhere in the seven years or longer duration uh, to take advantage of the rate cuts which you are expecting. Therefore, depending on the investor risk profile, you should consider investing in the different products. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.